there we are. It's me, John Park. Welcome to John Park's workshop. How you doing today? Uh, oh, I got an echo. Let me kill that echo. Uh, yeah, there we are. Hey, check it out. We've got some fun stuff in store today here in the workshop. Uh, so I'm excited to get going. Uh, looks like we have some people coming on in on the chats. Hello and welcome uh, people in our Discord chat and YouTube. Uh, we're also broadcasting over on Facebook and I think on Twitch. So uh, hello. And if you are interested in chatting with people or asking questions, uh, making comments, I'm going to be keeping an eye on the Discord chat as well as YouTube. So come on over there. I only have uh, so many eyeballs, so I can't check all the chats. Uh, so first of all, let's take care of a little bit of business. Uh, I wanted to point out that we have a jobs board. Are you aware of it? There it is. That is jobs.adafruit.com is where uh, we've posted that big help wanted sign. And uh, you can head there if you are interested in uh, looking for work or for posting a job posting. And it's free. That's right. The Adafruit Jobs Board is free. So go to jobs.adafruit.com and take a look, would you? Uh, now, I've got uh, a coupon code for you. If you are interested in getting 10% off on everything in your cart other than software, gift certificates, and subscriptions, then head on over to Adafruit and uh, use this coupon code, Altitude. Altitude will get you 10% off in the store today until midnight tonight, Eastern Standard Time in the United States of America. So please head on over there if you're interested in picking up some good Adafruit stuff. And we've got lots of good Adafruit stuff. Uh, hey, Dastels. Dave Estelles just showed up over in the Discord chat. Hey, C. Grover. Uh, hey, speaking of uh, the shows on Adafruit, C. Grover was the big winner last night on the call-in during Ask an Engineer. Uh, and he won himself a Pi Portal. That's right, there was a Pi Portal up for grabs for the first caller on the Ohm Bit Stab number last night, and uh, our good friend C. Grover from the Discord chat won. Way to go, man. Uh, so if you are interested in getting a Pi Portal, then you can go sign up, and you'll be alerted when those come back in stock, or any other stuff you want to get. You can throw it in your cart, and you're going to use this code, 10% off with Altitude. Um, now, let's see. What else? Uh, hey, that brings us to products of the week. I know my little sign here says product of the week, but I actually have two of them. Uh, and I did a little miniature project build to show off the products of the week. So here they are. Uh, the products of the week this week are the Metro M4 Express, which is this uh, lovely guy here. Where do you go? I had one. I swear there was one right here. I've lost it. There it is. So this is the new uh, purple, purple edition of the Metro M4 Express. Check that beauty out. Uh, same good at Sam D 51 uh, M4 Cortex M4 uh, goodness that you're used to from the M4 Express, except now it's purple. And I've also got our joystick, our little analog joystick. I love this thing. This is a you can see I've still got these long wires, silicone wires that I had from when I built my adaptive uh, controller, Xbox adaptive controller build. But this is a XY joystick that uses two analog 10K potentiometers. And it has built in by default, uh, there's a couple of springs in here that allow it to spring back to center, which is usually what you want for most applications, especially video games, uh, and also this dust cover, this little sort of uh, rubberized dust cover, that also helps in getting it centered. The reason I bring this up is for this products of the week, I decided to build a little um, MIDI controller input device using the joystick and the uh, Metro M4, and I didn't want it to spring back to center because I wanted to be able to use it to dial in values uh, on a synthesizer. And so I was able to unscrew the back of it. If you look here, that's the inside of the joystick when you remove the back cover. And by pulling off those two springs there, it now will uh, not snap to center so easily. Plus, if you get rid of the, uh, the rubber gasket on there, this little guy, then it really will, will stay put. So uh, to show this off, in fact, I'm gonna jump over to the overhead for a second and I'll play you 
a little um, example. Let's see. Where is that? Hey, go away thing. There we go. Uh, so I'm going to turn up just an external amplifier I have here to make things simple. Uh, and what you'll see is using the synthesizer, I've been able to uh, use my Metro M4 as a MIDI controller. And this is USB MIDI, basically the same code that I used for my um, Grand Central MIDI project that I did recently with the knob box. So I'm sending CC. And you can see here I've modified that by pulling off the springs. And so now the joystick stays put. Um, and so I'm going to turn on a little synth uh, sequence I have running. And what you're going to see is when I adjust on the x-axis, I'm going to change the uh, vowels that I'm using in a formant filter. And when I change on the y-axis, I'm going to adjust the frequency at which I'm filtering the sound. So here it is. I'll turn that up a little. All right, so I'm going to stop that there. Um, but I was very excited about that because that was incredibly easy to put together just following the basically the same code that I used for uh, the MIDI CC, and that uses our excellent Adafruit MIDI library for CircuitPython uh, to send those CC values. And it also actually has some hysteresis code from uh, C. Grover. Uh, he helped me out with that, which I was using for the, uh, the dials on the potentiometer to, to notch between things smoothly. Um, and it was dead easy to get that thing to do that. Can you believe it? So uh, those are my products of the week. I love that little joystick and the Metro M4 is a delight to use. And it's now purple. What more could you want? I don't get it. I don't know what else you could want. Uh, all right, so let's move on to a little something I like to call the Make Code Minute. All right, so there we are. There's our make code. Let me pull this uh, screen up here and I'll try to get out from the make code. It's on me. All right, so in Make Code Arcade, I want to talk about projectiles as well as an effect that's called the star field. So projectiles are another type of sprite. So in this example, I have my Adabot sprite, which I've created as a player. And then I'm also creating down here in this button A pressed block, a set projectile to, and then I'm creating this projectile sprite, which is just named my sprite. Uh, I should say it is projecting from my sprite, which is Adabot. And I've set a vector, uh, or yeah, a vector for this. So it's traveling at essentially up. In this case, up is negative 100, and it's not going anywhere on X. So whenever I press this button, I'm going to send a projectile out of Adabot in the up direction. And then you can see playing over here, I've got uh, this star field effect, which just gives us that feeling of traveling through space. And I've set my controls so that I can only move Adabox left and, Adabot left and right and constrained to the screen. So now when I press the A button, which you can also use the space bar, I'm going to send one of my little sprites shooting out of Adabot's head. So you can imagine uh, this might be the precursor to a sort of uh, space invaders or centipedes type of game. Or you may just want to use it to send love out into the universe birthed from Adabot's robot head. And that is how you use projectiles in Make Code Arcade. All right, yeah, I like that. Mr. Certainly said in the Discord chat, Adabot destroying enemies with love. 
Is it about destroying them? Maybe just saving them, saving enemies with love. I don't know. Um, but uh, there you go. So again, I continue to be really impressed and excited uh, about the quality of what you can do so easily inside of the um, Make Code Arcade. And uh, I hope you'll give it a give it a check out. Check it out, right? That's how you say that in English. Um, okay, so now this is going to bring us to our project build this week. So the project build this week, I have actually um, three very closely related projects, and these are using the Pi Portal. Um, so I've got my Pi Portal here, and actually I'm going to turn on. Uh, let me get. How about this view? Okay, so here's my Pi Portal. And you can see here, I'll hold it up for a second, I've actually attached it to a little trophy. And the reason is, uh, as you can see on the screen there right now, this is displaying the number of uh, subscribers on a Reddit sub. This is for the CircuitPython subreddit. Uh, and what I'm doing is I am checking every 20 seconds I've set it to. Normally this runs every 60 seconds, but with the hopes of seeing some action show up on this, I've set it so that every 20 seconds this is going to pull the API uh, at uh, Reddit for this subreddit and ask it to send the JSON data of the number of subscribers. It's actually sending a, a sort of preset bunch of uh, data that comes over and then we're parsing in the circuit python code to look for the key called subscribers uh, and then we'll update um, the text that you see on the screen there that says 313 so let me put this back here under this camera and i have to have the camera at an angle or you can't you get kind of a bit of a glare there um, there we go so i thought the trophy would be an appropriate way to um, display this because we're using it to show you sort of your congratulations. This is either how many followers you have on Twitter. We can use the API there. Uh, how many stars on a GitHub. Uh, or we have right here how many followers on a subreddit. But the fact is any uh, service that provides an API that can give you this data when it's queried in, and returns it in JSON format, which is a heck of a lot of them, you could build your own little stat display for. Um, so, oh, look at that. We just got a, uh, a new subscriber. Thank you, whoever just did that. We just, uh, you heard there was a little coin sound maybe, and uh, we have now 314 listed on there. Um, so, a couple things I wanted to show you. First of all, um, this is what the uh, debug statements look like on the Pi portal. So right now, uh, you can see it said it was drawing the text. The response was 314. Um, and then what you see above there, that's actually the raw uh, JSON data that's coming in. So I've turned the uh, Pi portal library into its debug mode or turned on its debug flag so that it's giving us a whole bunch of information uh, as it comes in. So now it's going and retrieving data again. So I've just got this every, every 20 seconds. And so somewhere in there, if we look at that, uh, we can see there's a 314. Uh, it's right at uh, about the middle of the screen. Uh, after the word subscribers, you'll see it right there. And um, that is, fo it's following that word key. Uh, word subscribers, the key called subscribers, and so it's that's that value of 314 is all that this thing is looking for, uh, and then throwing it on there. And then I believe we also have a um, check to see if that number is any different than what we previously had, and so we'll just ding that little coin chime whenever there's a difference between the previous value and the current value. So we have a little state that's saved. Um, so let's have a look uh, at, let's see, I might have to do some shenanigans here. Uh, to get my screen to display. So hold on, bear with me one second. I'm going to add a, uh, a screen capture from Moo because I forgot to fix that. So let's go new screen capture for Moo window. Select. I'm just talking to myself here, but this is uh, what I'm doing inside of Wirecast. In case you're curious, that's how I'm broadcasting all these layers. Okay, so here is a screen capture of my Moo session. And so let me go and see if I can zoom this in a little bit. And we'll have a look at what this code is actually doing. So 
Uh, we're bringing in some libraries, time and board. Uh, time means we'll be able to pause between um, checks. Board gives us a whole bunch of the um, uh, features of the Pi Portal itself. And then uh, this Pi Portal library, we're using this uh, for all sorts of things like drawing text, displaying bitmaps, uh, displaying captions, which are a little bit different than text. Uh, and uh, you can, you'll, you'll see that's also what I'm using to grab the data. So next you'll see I've got a variable here called subreddit equals uh, circuit Python. So we could put a different uh, subreddit in there if we wanted to look at something else. Um, I think there's one for Overwatch. Let's see. I don't know if capitalization matters. Let's try it. So this is the code running on my board right now. So if you watch um, here, we're going to, um, I don't know if you can see that, but what we're doing is I'm connecting to my access point. So this is all running over Wi-Fi. I've got it plugged into my computer for power right now and so that I can program it. But you can run this uh, just with a power only cable or with a battery if you want. It's not actually using your computer to retrieve the data. It's using your Wi-Fi access point. Um, so let's see, it looks like maybe I got that right. Uh, we'll see, we've at least displayed the name properly. Uh, and if I bring up that uh, debug screen, oh wait, I think it just, yeah, there we go. So there's probably a million nine hundred sixty-four thousand and some subscribers to that subreddit, so it's pretty large. Um, let me hide that for a second and you can see uh, in this, let's see, Drawing text, 1,964,555. Um, so another thing I can do if we look at our um, Moo session, and that's just gone up again. I'm going to switch this back to the circuit Python. Just undo that. And save. Uh, and so you'll see the way we're using that variable here, circuit Python, is then to set up a couple of things. One is this data source. So the data source is the URL of the subreddits about uh, page, and that comes back as this JSON data. So if you were to simply copy this and paste it into your browser, but change out the word, uh, uh, add in the word circuit Python here rather than this variable, you'll get back either the raw data or depending on the browser you're using or how you're going about it, you may see a nice tree view of that data. Uh, and I'll put this in the guide. I'm, I'm writing a guide on how to create these. Uh, and then we also have the, uh, the data location is actually how we're traversing the JSON file. So the JSON file has a hierarchy to it. Um, and uh, JSON, by the way, if you're not familiar with it, and I'm only barely familiar with it, but it is a uh, JavaScript... Um, oh, what does the ON stand for? Now, now I'm completely forgetting. It's like an XML, uh, but rather than being a markup language, it is a... Um, uh, a way of transmitting data very simply that's easy to parse. And now someone in the, in the chat, remind me what the heck the O-N are. Object notation. Thank you. JavaScript object notation. Thank you, Mr. Certainly. Um, so uh, the, in this case, the um, JSON data that comes back from Reddit has a hierarchy where there's a, um, a key called data. And then below it is a tree of lots of other keys, and one of those is a key called subscribers. And so that's how we're telling um, our program to parse the data that comes through. And then there's this caption, and that's just what we're going to display down at the bottom of our screen. And uh, next we have a uh, little variable that is used to um, essentially parse out the location of the CircuitPython drive um, directory structure and so that we can grab the bitmap uh, file that we're using as the background. And then, uh, oh, we're up to 316. Check that out. Uh, so now in this PyPortal command, we're grabbing the uh, instance of the PyPortal that we imported from the library. And then we're, we're giving it these arguments. The URL, which is the data source from up above. Um, and that's, in this case, the Reddit director, or, uh, URL. And the JSON path, which is that uh, hierarchy inside of the JSON file that we described. Uh, then we look at the default background variable, and that is using that CWD variable to grab the current working directory, um, the CircuitPython drive root directory in this case. And then there's a file there that's the Reddit background BMP, so that's this red uh, background file. Then uh, we are setting what font we're using. So there's a bitmap font that is sitting in a fonts folder, so you can see here. 
uh, where, and I'm gonna make this a little bigger in fact, I can zoom in even closer. Uh, so this line here, text font is the current working directory and then the fonts directory. And then there we have a bitmap font that was made uh, using the tools in, there's a Ruiz Brothers guide up on creating bitmap fonts for the Pi Portal. So uh, check that out if you wanna use your own typeface uh, and font size. And then we have the text position. So the text in this case is that 317. So I can move that around. Let's, uh, let's move that a little bit to the right. So let's go uh, 270 on X. So I'm gonna save this and you'll see my uh, Pi Portal has restarted. And let's get that screen visible there and I'll hide that moo. I didn't hide that moo. Let's show this. And not that, there we go. Uh, so here, again, I've got the debug on, so we're seeing more than you'll normally see. Uh, it has successfully connected to my access point, and there you can see it's pushed the text over to the right. Um, so in, in my guide, I'll include a little bit of information about how to traverse the XY space of the screen so you can move things. Um, so let's undo that and resave them. We've got our text color in hex here. Uh, and then we have caption text. And caption text is the text that is uh, essentially not changing. And the text is the text that's changing back based on that um, dynamic grabbing of the JSON data. And so our caption in this case is, uh, you can see it's not baked into the bitmap, that little thing down at the bottom that displays our URL. This is reddit.com slash r slash circuit Python. And remember that changed to Overwatch when I uh, created that Overwatch um, uh, variable in the path. Then what else do we have? We're just positioning and coloring that. And then I've turned on this debug true. Uh, last value, that's to use the state I mentioned so that we only uh, bing the coin whenever that, uh, that number increments or decrements. And then this is all that's happening in while true. So uh, we grab the, the uh, data by using that pi portal fetch. And that data comes into this variable called value. And that is that entire JSON um, string uh, using this um, instantiation where we told it where to go and what data to grab. So it's grabbing that value of 316 in this case. Uh, then we're checking against the old value and the new value and we'll bing the, the coin.wave. So again, using current working directory and having a wave file sitting at the root directory of the Pi portal. Uh, someone asked over on um, the YouTube chat, how often does it get the data? So that's actually the last thing I have here. I've told it to check every 20 seconds here. You could set this up to check every minute if you want or every 10 minutes, uh, depends on how impatient you get. Um, but it doesn't seem to impact much to have it check frequently, unless you're running off of battery maybe, because I'm, I'm assuming that those checks take a little more uh, using the Wi-Fi radio versus um, not checking all the time. So. Um, now, what we can do is, I've also got, uh, I'm gonna copy and paste my very similar code from uh, the Twitter project. So let me save that. And so you'll see um, that restarts my session. And, oh, I'm sorry, I wasn't showing you that Moo. I wasn't showing you Moo when I was talking about that code for the last three minutes, sorry about that. Uh, if you wanna take a screenshot of this and rewind later and play it back, that might be helpful. Um, so now what I've got in here is a very similar but slightly different uh, piece of code and this is using a Twitter name uh, as the um, variable that we're searching for inside of the syndication.twimage.com widgets, follow button, info dot JSON, screen names, Twitter name. So here we've got the Adafruit Twitter name in there. Um, but otherwise it's doing a very similar thing. It's gonna um, set a data source, which in this case is just the root of the JSON. So they, they kind of have a flat hierarchy for that. Um, in fact, let's, let's take a look um, at this data because I think it's kind of interesting. And I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna undo that paste and use this Reddit one as an example. So let me copy that, and I'm gonna open a Firefox session, and let me bring that up for you. Uh, so that's gonna require me to fix it. Hold on one second while I 
point that at a Firefox session and not a black hole mirror. All right, Firefox. Maybe not that one. How about that one? Nope. Hold on. Sure, that's the one. Okay, so let me bring this into view for you. And I'll make it bigger. So if I just paste in uh, that URL that we're using, and I'm going to set this to the Ada, or sorry, CircuitPython, and get rid of this quote here. Uh, so you can see Firefox actually has kind of a nice built-in viewer. So all I did was paste in that URL, um, the about JSON for that subreddit. And you can see this is the data that comes in. Here's the raw data that looks more like what we were seeing on the, uh, the debug screen. But then you can have, um, you can display it kind of nicely and you can filter it and do a lot of different things. But you'll see here there's a uh, top level um, key that's called data. And then if I drill down into that, um, we'll find in here subscribers somewhere. Uh, or what was it called? What was it called? Subscriber count? Let's see. I might have to search for it because there's a lot in here. So let's just do a subscribers. Okay, so you can see here, make that bigger. It's as big as it wants to get. Uh, there's our subscribers. Oh, it's saying 315. Did it drop? I don't know what happened. Uh, maybe it has. I don't have, I don't have the uh, Pi portal pointing to that right now. Uh, so that, now let's return to our example uh, with our Pi portal. And let's grab that camera there and go back to Moo. Oh, it doesn't want to show both of us, I see. Uh, so let's do a redo here. So this is the Twitter one. Uh, yes, yeah, back to the Twitter one. And so you can see here, very similar setup. Uh, really all that's different is that we're checking um, these, this Twitter URL and we have a slightly different um, uh, directory structure or data structure in the JSON file that comes in. Um, but you can see on my screen there, we got 157,197 Twitter followers. So again, if you want to go, if you're not following us on Twitter and you want to go. Um, uh, so you ja asks on YouTube, can it be real time? How would you do a stock price in real time? Uh, so that's a great, great uh, question. You, you want to uh, look for some website, if it's the Wall Street Journal or I don't know who, but you want to Google for, search for a website that is giving you a stock price that you're looking for through an API. Um, so you're going to have a, you're going to use a REST API to uh, ask for data, pull data uh, that includes the info you want. So in that case, a, a stock price. Um, and then looking at that JSON data that comes back, find the names uh, of the data structure that points you at it. So that they may just have at their top level um, price uh, for IBM stock or whatever it is. And then you would uh, change the URL in your data source of this, this uh, circuit Python script and then the data location to, and, and the name of that key to follow. Um, so we can, uh, we're almost out of time, but let's look at one other example, which is the GitHub stars. And let me run that real quick. And here. Okay, so you're going to again see my Pi Portal reboot. And when it comes back to life, it's going to display a different bitmap. So that's one of the other changes here is that we've created these BMP graphics. Uh, and now it's going to, uh, so this is all in the BMP, and then what you'll see pop up are the uh, URL down at the bottom, so that's the Adafruit Circuit Python GitHub, and then in a moment we'll see the number of stars, which is kind of likes uh, inside of the GitHub ecosystem. And let me see, are there any questions over in Discord? It keeps going up and down, yeah, wild, huh? Okay, where are the stars? Let's have a look at the, uh, I'm gonna hide the circuit Python for a second so we can look at the, oh, some error occurred. Syntax in, okay, so let me look at that. 
Where's that? Syntax in the JSON. Oh, that's weird. Huh. Let's re re uh, restart that. So I'm just going to resave the file. It happens sometimes, but not too often that uh, the JSON comes back malformed. I don't know why. I believe we have checks here in the. Um, yeah, so we have an exception in the in the try loop of our while true that says if there's a value error or a runtime error, it will just print that some some error occurred and it's retrying it. Oh, there we go. So we have 1,057 stars in GitHub now. Um, let's look at this for a second full screen, uh, and I'll hide that and that, and let me back the camera out. Uh, so you can see here I've got this trophy. Um, and the way, uh, let me back this out just a little bit more. The way this went is I went to the thrift store and I happened to find a trophy. Uh, I was looking for one and I found one for a dollar and I think 59 cents. Uh, and this used to be a dodgeball trophy for the California Crown Kickball Fall 2012 Championships. Uh, and let me unplug, let me unplug this for a second. And so all I did was use some uh, zip ties to, let's see, which one did I put on first? There we go. To just connect my Pi Portal to this trophy. So this will vary depending on the trophy you get if you want to build it this way. Uh, of course, there's lots of other stuff you could mount it on, but I thought this was cute because it's sort of a trophy-like thing to look at your stats. Um, and so my Pi Portal just has these four uh, M3 mounting uh, holes on these tabs here. Uh, and I just used zip ties to connect that there, but you could also use foam tape or connect it in other ways. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that. That is a um, pretty fun project using the Pi Portal, and it's uh, helped me start to wrap my head around some of the uh, REST API uh, business of getting data brought in as JSON data from a website and then displaying it here and how to traverse it. Big thanks to uh, Lady Ada for helping me get started and, and pointing me in the right direction to start uh, looking at those and figuring those things out. Uh, and huge thanks to the CircuitPython team and volunteers and people who've been uh, writing the software uh, to make this possible. As uh, Mr. Lady Ada PT pointed out yesterday on Ask an Engineer, it is really incredible that with the uh, Pi Portal in CircuitPython, it is as easy as it now is to do these sorts of Internet of Things data display devices um, because in the past they have been pretty brutally difficult to use uh, just given the layers of, of tweaking and code and things that you have to deal with. So um, another question over in YouTube is other ways that you would use this. Well, you can use this for displaying uh, data, but you could also use this for sending data. We have a resistive touch screen on here, so making interfaces where you can um, go and send out information is also possible. We'll be using it for some projects like that coming up. Um, you can also display images on it. You can see right now I'm displaying a, a static BMP, but I'll have some projects in the future where we are uh, dynamically grabbing JPEG images from the internet, converting them uh, on a backend server to a BMP, and then pulling that BMP file onto here to display. So uh, you can imagine making um, photo frames and things like that will become pretty darn easy using the Pi Portal. So uh, that is all I've got for today. I want to thank you all so much for tuning in. Um, I'll be hanging out in the Discord chat for a little bit, and then I'll be going to finish up some guides, and I'm going to do three uh, separate mini guides on each of these. They're, they're essentially the same project, but it'll um, allow someone to just go and look at the Reddit project or the GitHub project or the Twitter project. So uh, thank you all so much for tuning in to John Park's workshop, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.